Hey, it's Saul with another video brought to you in part from our beloved sponsors. You're here because you want to walk like a crab in patch 8.2, and I'm going to tell you how to complete the meta achievement Undersea Usurper, which will unlock the mount, as well as the level 4 version of the Memory of Lucid Dreams Essence. This achievement is going to take a long time, and you're going to find out why shortly. First, I'm going to get the passive achievements out of the way. These are the achievements that are considered easy, or at least they're ones that you'll eventually get as long as you're playing eh, on a regular basis, preferably every day. Tour of the Depths is like the tutorial achievement. You need to complete an emissary, complete the quest to use your first scrying stone, which is a treasure tracking item that you use in the zone, level a combat ally to 5, find Merle, he's a murloc, and complete a quest in your hub, kill a world boss, defeat one of Ashara's champions, which are all identified on your map, and to defeat one of Mardivis' lab creations, which is a daily-ish kind of quest that you'll see often. Easy peasy. Now the target eliminated is also simple, you just kill every champion that floats your way. Add-ons like Handy Notes will be extremely useful, and as we get into 8.2, there will likely be other rare tracking add-ons that will assist you, and if I can find some, I'll list them somewhere in the description or in the sticky comment above. I thought you said they'd be rare, is pretty much the same difference, throw on a rare tracking add-on and start hunting. These rares are similar to Argus rares, as in they don't appear all day, every day, and they have like a block of time when they appear, hence the usefulness of these add-ons. There's a series of achievements to complete for your combat allies. This basically means you need to get all of them to level 30, which is the max level. And at this time on the PTR, the amount of experience that you can obtain per day is limited, which is kind of the equivalent to one level per day, which means that at present this achievement can take up to three months to complete. So it's probably going to be one of the last ones that you obtain for the meta, if there are no changes to how follower levels work before 8.2 goes live. A fistful of mana pearls requires you to obtain 1000 prismatic mana pearls, which are found from world quests, rares, and treasures. You're going to complete this without a second thought. Back to the Depths is to complete the summons of the Deep event 10 times. This particular event appears periodically throughout the day, and as long as everyone drops what they're doing to take this guy out, just jump right in and you'll have no problem getting this achievement. Explore Najatar. Yeah, just explore Najatar. Enough said. Subaquatic support requires you to complete any 30 bounties in the zone. A few bounties appear each day in the form of daily quests, and the achievement tracker only needs you to complete any 30 bounties, and not 30 unique ones, so no big deal here. Puzzle Performer asks you to complete every puzzle type in the zone. If you're completing world quests, you're going to get this eventually, but from testing, you can find and solve puzzles that aren't attached to world quests too. Use an add-on like Handy Notes to track where these puzzles typically spawn, and do a round if you're looking to fill up this meta. You also need to hit Exalted with your faction's Nashatar rep, which is no big deal. And finally, Sunken Ambitions requires you to complete the entire zone storyline, which should only take a few short weeks. So now, let's get to the active work that you'll be doing to complete this meta achievement. Periodic Destruction requires you to defeat every combination of elemental that appears in Mardivis' lab, which is located here in Ajari Terrace. In this lab will be a quest that appears every so often for you to use arcane reagents to create these elementals. These reagents drop randomly, and you'll eventually build a nice little stockpile. So I'm just going to go straight into telling you what each combination is. Combinations 1, 2, and 3 are just activating a single crystal and then starting the encounter. So just do 1, and then 2, and then 3 as each quest becomes available. Combinations 4, 5, and 6 cover all the combinations when the first crystal that you choose is the red one. 7, 8, and 9 are the same thing, in this case it's just the yellow crystal. Finally, 10, 11, and 12 are for the bluish, purplish crystal. The 13th combination though is something that I'm still not entirely sure about. It might be an entirely random spawn. It might have something to do with no crystals being chosen, it's hard to say. But if you happen to know, leave a comment and I'll update the description or the sticky above. Trove Tracker is just your find all the treasures meta, but it's not linked to any world quests, so I threw it into this section. Just throw on one of those rare add-ons or treasure tracking add-ons and knock this one out. Terror of the Tadpoles requires you to go to Bloodfin Village here and to scare 100 tadpoles. If you have nameplates on, you can see that they're non-combat murlocs, you can see the green text above their heads, you just need to click on them and they run away. 
There's a cast time on the click and it does dismount you, but it doesn't get interrupted when you're being attacked and <laughs> you're going to be attacked a lot. These Murlocs will swarm on you really hard. And when you fear each tadpole, an additional Murloc spawns to mess with you some more. And on top of that, you also get a debuff that seems to increase your aggro radius. Overall, this achievement is really easy to complete, you can do it in one day, but you might want to have a friend to help keep the swarms of murlocs off of you. Nothing to scry about is a weird one, and expect maybe some small changes by the time you're reading this guide. You need to find 100 treasures using a scrying stone. It's an item that drops in Najatar that lets you find hidden treasures. It's easy to understand, you just wait for an extra action button to appear, you click it, and then it finds the treasure for you. Ta-da! The problem is though that the scrying stone only lasts for 5 minutes, and at the moment it only drops randomly off of mobs in the zone, and on top of that it's unique, you can only hold one at a time. So your window of opportunity to find and open these chests is a bit small. Feline figurines is an achievement that I only take maybe 20% of the credit for. Between the user's prevention and Nerissa over in the Wowhead comments, they provided the locations for all of these cats, which are fairly easy to see when they're out in the open, but some of them are hidden in annoying places like behind a starfish doodad. First go to coordinates 5528, you're going to be just outside of a cave. Inside there's an arcane device that you have to kind of get past, just sneak past the swirlies, and the cat is just on top of a starfish. Over at 5930, which is a little bit just below Mardivis' lab, there's a cave with a bunch of elementals. Go inside, try to survive, and the cat is right over there. Over at 6026, another cave, more elites, a cat right there on the left hand side, and hopefully you not dying trying to get this footage. Over at 5822, you're going to find this one under the water, although this one is not obscured by any vision or any difficult mobs. This one should be pretty easy to get. This next cat's over at 7123, but to get there, come to 7024, and you're going to be going under this little waterfall guy right here. Watch out for the elite, and you'll find this cat hidden behind a starfish. Right next to 7325 is a neutral flight point. All you gotta do is drop down a little bit to the west, dive in, there's an underwater cave that you can see right here, and you'll find your next cat in this cavern. To get to this one over at 61 and 10, you have to go to the Shirakes Repository. You're going to dive into the pool where the tentacles are, and right under it is another underwater cavern, and right there is a cat. Over here at Bloodfin Village at 2929, you'll see an underwater cavern right over here. And somewhere in there is another cat. I just happened to pick it up, you can't see it, but believe me, it's there. Over at 4081 is another underground cavern hidden behind a waterfall. Through that cavern is this cave full of trees that you just might have to kill and there is a cat right here in the back. And the final cat, sorry that this is done in no particular order, is over here at around 3849. What you need to do is go to this ledge and, well, just try to gently drop down like so, and inside, somewhere in here, is your cat. Okay, actually, here is your cat. Congratulations. Last but not least, Merle's Secret Stash is a series of buying and trading goods. It's kind of similar to the one that eventually led to the Fathom Dweller mount, but this one is much simpler to do, although it's, it's, it's no less a pain in the butt, and you'll see why when I'm done. First thing you need to do is save Merle. He's a murloc that you find very easily around here, and you're going to see a quest marker over his head. Once you save him and complete another quick quest, you can now start working at this achievement. There are four Murloc NPCs that you'll have familiarized yourself with if you just did this quest. I'm going to butcher their names, but oh well. Here are a couple snags with this particular achievement. You're going to find that the item that you're trying to buy from Merle has a different cost each day. So you're going to want to open up the Merle vendor and take a look at just what these reagent costs are. Then you need to go between all four of these vendors and trade the necessary items to get the items that you need in order to buy this item from Merle. On top of that, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get the mount after you do these trades and get this box. On top of that again, you're only able to initiate this trade once a day. And as a final insult to injury, you're not allowed to just stockpile a whole bunch of these items and just trade them into Merle each and every day. Every one of these items has a duration of one day. So you're going to have to go through this entire sequence every day, and the sequence might change. Now the sequence itself doesn't take very long, but I don't know how many different kinds of combinations there are, I'm just going to give you one as an example. First thing to do is to talk to Grimmelg. 
and buy 84 of the flatulent fish. Then go to Fleur Girl and buy 36 unidentified masses and 12 bags of who knows what. Then go to Hurl Girl and buy 60 sweet sea vegetables, 6 dirty murloc socks, and 12 jars of fish faces. Once you do that, go into some water and clean the socks. Yeah, you go into water nearby like somewhere, you click the dirty socks, and they become clean socks. Yay. Then, go to Murgler, this squirmy guy over here, and buy 15 disintegrating sand sculptures and 4 dense rocks. Finally, go back to Grimmelg and buy 2 sea giant foot dust and 3 extra slimy tails. Now you can go to Merle and buy the severely rusted lockbox which contains the mount. Okay, actually, well, it might contain the mount. I happen to get a barnacled lockbox, ooh. And that takes care of the undersea usurper achievement. If you got any tips to help people out a little bit more, leave a comment below and I'll try to sticky it above. Please like the video if it was useful, share it with others, and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.